on the uh, Guelph to Goderich rail trail today and in fact I'm actually going Goderich to Guelph. Now I've never been a stickler for details when it comes to planning things and in some ways this has served me really well over the years because I've ended up doing things spontaneously and things that if I'd thought about it much longer I probably wouldn't have done but every now and again it comes back and it bites me. There was one part of the ride that I did plan and that was to drive to Goderich the day before with my wife and then we spent a really pleasant afternoon wandering around the lakeshore and looking at the historic old buildings and then the following day my wife was going to be driving to Guelph and picking me up at the other end of the trail. The following morning I got up bright and early and I set out on the start of my ride fully expecting to do around 130 kilometers before I reached Guelph. The first few kilometres of the trail climb gently away from the port and then you cross the Maitland River on this spectacular wooden footbridge. And after a little bit more climbing you find yourself on top of the escarpment looking out over Goderich and the river. My wife said to me, hey, make sure you've got enough data on your phone so that you can access the internet and you can look at maps just in case you get lost. But really foolishly, I said to her, it's a trail. You get on one end and you get off the other. This is a little bit unexpected, but just to save my tires, I'm gonna push it through this little bit. There used to be a bridge just over here. There, there's the bridge. So because I hadn't planned, I had no idea that the bridge over the river was out and it looked like it had been out for quite a number of years as well. So I had to turn around and backtrack and find my way to the next nearest bridge. After riding about two or three kilometers downstream on a very hilly hiking trail, I came across Ball's Bridge and I was really glad I did because it was a, an iron truss bridge and it was actually a double span truss bridge and as such it was really really rare and well worth seeing. And eventually after a few missteps and a few wrong turns and about nine kilometers of extra cycling I found my way back onto the uh, trail and back into the middle of farmland. I've been acting like a wild man Sleeping like a child so luminous and vibrant I'm always in love for you Always in love Always in bloom for you Having done that not inconsiderable detour and then having to hike my bike in a few different locations I was a bit behind the time that I was expecting to be and I was a little bit concerned in the back of my mind about meeting up with my wife and being late for that rendezvous. So I decided to kick on the pace and uh, push it along for the next couple of hours. Though stranger in this content, I'm always in When I got to Perth there was another river crossing and the bridge over that river was out as well so I ended up having to ride through the town and then out into the country on a fairly decent sized loop just to find the trail again. I was still in good spirits though and things like this kind of really put a smile on my face. Well, it's actually Saturday today, so it's supposed to be a dollar. Otherwise, on Sunday, it's free. 
But fortunately I have a lot of my own cold water, but I'm gonna make use of the chairs and sit here for a minute or two and have a bit of food and some water and then I'll, I'll push on. But I think that's amazing that people do this. You know, there's a lot of good people in the world. more detours came along in pretty quick succession and thankfully these two were fairly short but because I hadn't studied the map or I hadn't downloaded it I had no idea how long they were going to be so I wasn't sure if it was going to be adding hours to my time. This is maybe the third or fourth one of these that I've seen where uh, a local resident has just set up for people to take a break and have a drink. It's uh, one of the most awesome features of this trail. And here we are, still in the middle of farmland. And I've just done a hundred kilometers. But my spirits were still really high and I was enjoying just how quiet and peaceful this trail was. At around 125 kilometers, this happened. Oh, for fuck's sake. For a brief moment, my heart sank and I just thought, ah, oh, God, not again. But when I thought about it, I'd already done 125 kilometers. So using the last few percent of battery on my phone, I contacted my wife and I gave her a new and probably a much more interesting location to pick me up at. It was incredibly tough, it was incredibly picturesque and interesting, and it was also incredibly eventful, but that was due in a large part to my reluctance to over plan things, and perhaps for my sake, that is something I should work on for the future. <laughs> 